So I signed up around about October of 43 and I was called up on the 4th of the 4th, 44. My father wouldn't sign the documents to release me, as you might call them, unless I joined the Navy. He was not shoving me there, but he wanted me to have nothing to do with the Army in which his experiences at Framils and Poziers and all the other places up to the uh, Hindenburg Line were so horrendous and terrible that he just said, no, the Navy or nothing. At Flinders, we um, spent a lot of time on the parade ground. It was general sort of training, which I'm sorry to say meant that you didn't really know what you were getting into when you went to sea. There were five ships in the flotilla, the Napier Norman, Nesta, which got sunk at Crete, Nizam and uh, Nepal. And we formed part of the British East Indies fleet. We uh, supported General Slim's 14th Army by bombardments, which was basically what we were doing. And in my ship, the average age was under 21. But I was a public school boy, as you were known of in those days. That's a private school, I think, now. There were 16 of us in the ship. People knew we were slightly different. The, the crew knew, we, when I say by being slightly different, was that you spoke a bit more correctly. <laughs> Let's leave it at that. Uh, and you, you definitely had an advantage in your education. I remember I was stunned one day when a fellow asked me to help him with an exam he was doing to raise his educational status. And I said to him, how do you know that I can help you? And he said, oh, you just speak different. We got on, we were accepted. We got on, we fitted in. We just were ourselves and we stuck into it because we were able seamen. Coming back to Australia in, com in company with a whole lot of other ships in the Nizam, the Nizam was hit by an extraordinary wave in the bight and 10 odd people, I think, sailors got washed overboard. It did a 45 degree roll and water went down the funnel and then the, the sea kicked it back and the, the mess decks were a wreck because everything came out of the some things. We were 10 miles south of her and we had no indication of everything. We were in a calm sea, most extraordinary, it was one of those rare uh, waves. And the Napier's Captain Buchanan was put in charge of the landing party that took control of the big naval base at Yukosuka. We were given leave to go within 10 miles or something or other around the dockyard area, which was pretty substantial. So we got up to Tokyo, which probably we shouldn't have, and we walked around. There was hardly anything standing at all. It was put down to the American firebomb raids, as they were called, which really did more damage, I'm told, than the two atom bombs. There was just nothing there except hundreds of steel safes for keeping your valuables in, because the Japanese houses basically were of a frail, Frame. Then we went to Nagasaki or nearby to pick up Australian prisoners of war. I in my whole life have never seen anybody uh, so emancipated that they were. Uh, in my life they were just skin and bones and we were helping them get dressed into uniform, into um, sort of summer uniforms, brown, those old brown ones and we're issuing each one with a slouch hat. And I've never forgotten I put the hat on the head of this fellow and it went down to his shoulders. And the crew were very, very hostile about all that. When I was asked by an American in the firm that I once worked for why we didn't like the Japanese, I said to him, well, if you'd seen what I saw of the prisoners of war, you would probably have the same me feeling as I did because it was, it was horrible that's the only word to say and how they lived those POWs on like a lot of them did including some of my relations uh, I don't know. I actually got discharged physically unfit uh, through lung problem that I had, got pleurisy in other words. I was what 22 perhaps 
And um, I was Swallows representative in Mildura. In my early days at Mildura, I was in a, one of the only two pubs. And you had to book your pub a month ahead or you didn't get the bed. And one freezing night, I rang down to the desk and said, could I get another blanket? And the fellow said, what do you think this is? There's a mat on your floor, put that on. And that's a fact. Anyway, so I'm in Mildura, my wife's in Melbourne, to me, is in Melbourne, and she came in Mildura a couple of times, and funny enough, I'd, in hindsight, I did see her walking in the street. And I went to a party in Melbourne, and she was there, and we, things went from there. And we've got four children, 11 grandchildren, and four great-grandchildren now. So uh, life's been pretty full. What would I advice be? I think there should be a form of military service. I believe probably pig-headedly, but I believe that it's good for people. My career, short as it may have been in the Navy, I don't want to do it again or anything, but uh, it didn't harm me, it was good. And someone's got to protect the country. We were lucky that the Americans came here. I've been heavily involved in the ARSL all my life. For the last 20 years of my working life, it was spent with the RSL Advocates Office here in Melbourne, uh, caring for widows and uh, or veterans. But you can tell if a person has been in the service. That may sound uh, snobbish or fatuous or pig-headedness or what you may like, but you can. And through the RSL clubs, you tend to stick together and, of course, the other war People are coming along, sadly, but they're coming along and filling the holes. But uh, in the Navy case, I think there's about six of us left, actually. Yeah.